Hello and welcome to Sharing Hope. My name is Sharita and I am so glad that you've joined us today. We have a wonderful guest, um, Miss Katie Allred. I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. We're going to get started. Um, Katie is an assistant professor of software development and marketing at the University of Mobile. She also co-founded churchcommunications.com and she manages the church communications Facebook group and that group serves as a resource when it comes to marketing and communication strategies strategies for more than 23,000 church leaders. Um, Katie also previously consulted with Facebook on their group's product. She's a speaker and she blogs at katieallred.com. You can connect with her on Twitter. Her handle is at Katie J Allred, or you can email her um, at katie at churchcommunications.com. So Katie Allred, how are you doing? And thank you for joining us today, girl. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's crazy. Actually, since that bio was written, we've gained 2,000 members. So we're over 25,000 now, 25,000 wow. strong, which is wild. God has really blessed it. And uh, it's, it's grown so much because so many churches need help right now. And, and that's what we want to do. Yeah. Well, I have loved just getting to know you and your team and all the great work that you do. But I thought first, will you just kind of tell the people who are watching, what is the purpose of church communications? What's your heart, your passion? Tell us about the good work you guys are doing. Great. Yeah. We started church communications five years ago and really it came out of this deep, um, I don't know. I've always felt this calling to minister to ministers. Mm. And I wasn't sure what that would look like, right? I've always loved Jesus. I've always loved technology and the internet. Uh, part of my story is I started a forum with people all around the world during my childhood. And it grew. Yeah, it's pretty what? wild. Um, it was actually through Harry Potter. I don't, <laughs> um, I and uh, uh, we won an award from J.K. Rowling. I mean, there was 15,000 members. Yeah, it was crazy. And uh serious Katie that's awesome I was, yeah and so I was like nine years old I, I did this from nine to 15 and through that I was the administrator of this forum so this was before there was social media so I want to make that clear like there this was throwback this is throwback, this yeah, is this throwback. Is 1999 <laughs> so about 2004 um and you know what I learned through that was that people can have real friendships through the internet, right? Like, I don't actually know. We've never seen each other in person, sure. okay? But yet, I feel connected to you. Absolutely. I feel like I know you, and you know? I feel like I'm like, same. I care about Sharita as a human being. Yeah. And so I knew then, and I, what I did then, and what's so funny is this is even before I came to Christ, right? So I was just a child raised in the church and I thought everybody was raised in the church. Mm -hmm. And so I was sharing the gospel with thousands of people online and doing it very unintentionally. Oh, wow. So I started thinking about it in the last 10 years of my life. Uh, I was like, how can I share the gospel the way I did as a child, but do it intentionally and strategically, mm -hmm. right? How can I create these online communities that can be uh, evangelistic in nature and help churches understand how they can take down the barriers of human interaction and reach people uh, with the gospel? Because we know that life change really happens in the context of a relationship. Nobody comes to Christ. Nobody really even visits church without another human being connecting with them first, right? Sure. Uh, it all starts with one human asking another human and caring about them enough. And so we can do that online too. It doesn't have to just be in person. Uh, but figuring that out has been my, my greatest uh, mission, I guess, in the last uh, 10 years, really. And so, yeah, that's, that's a little bit about me. Yeah. Katie, <laughs> about how church comes so, that is so cool because it's in the fabric and fiber of who you are as a person. I mean, even to be doing that as a child, that's, that's really cool. And what I, I guess I want to say for you and the work that you all do there's so much with social media sometimes that can be seen as being a negative or, you know, and you guys use it in such a positive and inspiring way. And so I wondered if you would tell us, what is it like being on the, you know, you're on the front lines, but you're behind the scenes. Like, what is that like? You know, it's really interesting. It's really fun to see churches figure it out. In the last two months, you know, since this pandemic has been going on, 
we were 10 years behind. The church was 10 years behind already. Yeah. And then they finally had to catch up. <laughs> you know, like yep. everybody across the board. And what my prayer is, what my hope is, is that we can somewhere meet in the middle mm-hmm. of where we were um, in February and then who we are today. Okay. Uh, after this pandemic is over, I pray that we keep some of these things and don't just lose them because there are still a lot of vulnerable communities and a lot of people that will not connect with a church and not come to a church's door, you know, and actually sit in a church because they're afraid of not being able to get up and leave. What's great is that, you know, these live stream situations, I can get up and leave, yeah. you know, like that's, that's you know, what, what's great is that people can uh, connect without really being connected. It's, it's great and terrible. It has great, it's a great and terrible thing that can happen. But what's really cool is that we can connect with these people uh, by asking them to do really small things. So one thing I've been talking about is that it's really changed the breadth of our ministry, right? Like we now have a really wide net that we can cast, okay? The harvest is plentiful. The harvest is plentiful online. It has been plentiful online since the internet, like since, you know, Google started being Google, okay? Like it has been ripe and ready. And as the internet goes forward and gets into these remote locations that the gospel hasn't been, like how cool, what a great opportunity, right? It was really fun. I got to uh, go on a mission trip recently and help some people with um, in India with a, with a podcast that they're launching in, in different languages. Uh, and wow. it's the first podcast in those languages and it's going to point people to Christ. How cool is that, right? Cool. And so the internet has the capability to take the gospel where it hasn't gone before. And so we just have to figure it out, right? Strategically. I love that. I absolutely love that. So help um, maybe our viewers understand like, who exactly do you work with and serve? Or how would I know, you know, if I need to partner with someone, you know, like you guys at Church Communications? Yeah, so we serve all sorts of churches, all kinds of churches, every denomination and every size, really. And so any church can join. You can go to churchcommunications.com. You can go and find the group on Facebook. It's Church Communications. It's the one with 25K, so that's nice. Or it might be a little higher, hopefully, when you see it. Um, But we are the official uh, means of communication from Facebook, too. So when Facebook launches new tools and stuff for faith-based communities, they launch it through our group, which is just really awesome. Like It's been a really cool blessing to work with Facebook hand in hand wow. to create these, uh, okay. these new tools. But, um, yeah. So if they want to get connected, that's probably the easiest route. And then of course you can direct message me, send me an email, Katie at church communications.com. If you need like really, uh, direct help, we we love working with all churches. I mean, we do some consulting, we do some actual work with churches. However, uh, we can help you uh, we're more than happy to, but the group is the primary mode because it's really churches helping churches. At the end of the day, it's really a crowdsourced effort of answers, and it's just a huge encyclopedia almost of information uh, that churches can access completely for free. Nice. That's awesome. I love those types of forums and resources. You can learn so much from people. Um, the next thing I want to ask you about is like, what do you see that, you know, churches are doing really well mm-hmm. and then where areas maybe where they're, we're struggling a little bit, you know? Yeah. So talking about that, like we rushed into this, but we do not have to rush out of it. Mm, and that's so good. we, it's okay for you to take your time. I think we're going to be stuck here, honestly, for a little bit. And so, you know, take some time to figure out, Uh, how do we do ministry really well online? So like I said earlier, we've created this great breadth, okay? But we need to work on the depth, all right? How do we do discipleship really well online? You know, when somebody makes a decision, what, what is the next step, okay? We've got it figured out in person, but what does it look like online? So, you know, maybe it looks like this. Okay, so here's an example. Every church is doing live streaming on a Sunday morning, uh, why don't you make, you need to make sure that you have one very clear call to action throughout your entire presentation. And it needs to be extremely clear. It does not need to be convoluted or <laughs> confusing. Don't put your cash register in a, um, that's, this is a story brand thing, but, 
uh, Donald Miller used to say, don't put your cash register in a bathroom stall if you're a store, right? That doesn't make yeah. sense. Nobody, right. nobody goes to the cat, the bathroom <laughs> to check out. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. at a church, it's the same thing. Like your call to action needs to be really clear. What do you want them to do next? What do you want the user to do next? Um, and so if that is like this post, it can be as simple as that like this post and then get people get your greeters who have been dying to do something who are like so extremely excited about your church get them to um volunteer you know plan for them in planning center just like you used to and get them to actually message direct message so take it from commenting like public commenting take it from there to direct messaging them on messenger and saying what can i be pre hey i saw that you interacted with this live stream from sunday um i would love to know what i can be praying for you today Bye. okay Prayer is the primary strategy for sharing the gospel. Mm -hmm. It cannot get more simple than that, but it's also the most complicated thing in the world uh, for some people to understand. Because I think we just have to create these conversations where people can be vulnerable and real with us. And we have to figure out ways that we can take down the barrier. And I think that prayer is a great one, but also just creating it where it's very, very simple, right? Comment below if you want to be followed up with, like yeah. this post. Um, you could create a form, but if you create a form, it needs to be really simplistic. Simple. Please don't go and add 10 fields. It needs <laughs> to be like name and email and that's yeah. it and then you do the work on the other side and I know you're like well I would like to ask them their address and they're the, you know and and I get it you get, um, build up to that yeah yeah, yeah. keep yeah. it going keep the mm -hmm. conversation going once they uh, uh subscribe send them another email you can do an automation even you know and, and a lot of different tools do an automation that sends back say hey we would love your address so we can send you a first time guest um gift right the church is the most hospitable uh yeah. entity in the world we should be you know continuing what we would normally do on a sunday morning we would normally give people first time guests right yeah. uh, i know at my church when you're a first time guest you get like a coffee cup and you get a um, gift card to get free coffee or whatever well you can still send coffee cups and um mm. gift cards in the mail and so you can still do that like and why aren't we still doing it we we should do that so that people are like oh like they really considered me to be a valuable member a valuable first time guest at their church and then like continue the conversation, right? You've got the address, you send them the thing, you know, maybe a couple of days from then say, Hey, um, just wanted to follow up. This is, we've been praying for this for you or whatever. Um, how's that going? And uh, is there anything else we can be praying for you? Would you be interested in joining this small group we have, this virtual small group? Would you be interested in joining this class? We're doing Financial Peace University together. Yeah. Is there anything, uh, you know, that we can help you with? Do you have any felt needs, any physical needs that we can help with? Uh, I think that is where we can be the hands and feet of Jesus, just in a unique and different way. It looks a little different online than it does in person. Uh, but it can be still a little in person. It just look, it just looks different. Yeah, I love how you're describing it because it's saying even though we're apart, you know, in distance, you can still be personal and right. have that personalized touch with people. Um, and I love, I just want to underscore you're saying simplicity works and A, that you don't, A, it can be simple and B, you don't have to figure it out by yourself that right. here's a community of people that you can join for free who can give you ideas and insights. Yeah. Um, thank you. I love all that you're sharing. Um, I guess the next thing I'm curious about is like what type of uh, friction points maybe do you see between like maybe a church leadership team and then like the church communications yeah, there's always going to be friction between like uh, even staff and lay leaders or whatever. Um, you know, I I've seen where it can go awry, but honestly, everybody is trying so hard to figure it out. So I think it's just really important that we both come at it from um, postures of grace, right? Like Ooh, that's good. Uh, <laughs> that either way, uh, we just want the gospel to be shared. That is our primary thing that we want to happen. So 
you know, how can we communicate uh, effectively? And so maybe that looks like having more meetings via Zoom. And I hate that, but, you know, things can get lost in the weeds via so many emails and texts that are being having right now. If you don't have great processes set up, this is a great time to work on some systems and processes, right? To get into project management systems, um, to create an Asana account or ClickUp or whatever you want to use yeah. and, and really kind of figure out what that looks like, you know? So, yeah, I think that's what I would say, you know, figure out how you can measure effectiveness. I think that's where, that's where the pastor is having, you know, a hard time is they do not see, they don't see the, the people in the pews, mm -hmm. you know, they need to understand the people are still there. And like, so maybe delivering them a list of, Hey, the greeters followed up with all these people. Here's the addresses. Right. We'd love to have you send some of these cards. We need you to help you know, maybe zoom with each new person. Right. So like you've got, maybe that's your next step after you send them your free gift, say, Hey, now schedule a call with the pastor. Right. Like you can set up a, you can book me, you can book dot me like calendar and like set it, hook it up to your pastor's calendar and, you know, block off time because I know he needs time to work on his sermon and stuff. But like, why don't you set up where it's easily uh, bookable for him and for the person and so that they can make time to schedule with the pastor and actually talk one-on-one, -on -one, right? I think that'd be more fulfilling for him as well um, or her and just figuring out like which way to go. Yeah. That's good. I just love the way your brain works. I love all your insights and your ideas because it's like you're such a possibilitarian. And so I love that. Um, and I know I've gotten so many little innovative ideas of things that I can do just talking with you. Um, I still want to talk about your work at the university and um, at the good um good work agency. But before we shift to those, I just want to give one more kind of shout out for people. If they want to get connected with you guys over at Church Communications, what are the best ways for them to do that? Churchcommunications.com primarily. And then we have links there to the group. Um, we have Instagram, we have YouTube. Um, we're coming out with an Apple TV app and all that kind of stuff. Because we have so much content coming out. We really want to make sure we have five shows every week in our, from Joanna LaFleur, who's an amazing, she's on, um, she's on CBN or something. I don't know. She's on a Canadian, uh, show and she's amazing. She really is just uh, phenomenal. And Dave Adamson, who's the online teaching at North, uh, online minister at North Point. He is a YouTube or church show that's on every week. Um, and so we're, we're just trying our best to like teach, um, as many people as we can. So yeah, there's so much good content, the Facebook group primarily. So church okay. communications, if you search in Facebook, it should be pretty easy to find. Okay. Awesome. So hopefully people will get connected. Okay. So tell me all about your work at the university. I want to hear about the good work agency. What's going on? Yeah. So the university, I've been there for two years now. It's a, just it's a wonderful school. It's a, it's small, which we thought, you know, it's so funny. We used to maybe like, not like that. And now I'm like, Nope, it's actually the, like the best selling point of the university is that yep. our class size was already 14, you know, like nice. average uh, was 14 oh, in a classroom. Oh. And so, so yeah, intimate. our biggest class. Personal. So intimate. I love that. Right. Our biggest class ever was like 30 people. So we're just going to half those right during this. So our plan is to be back hopefully in the fall. We'll, we'll, we're, we're praying for it. Um, but yeah, just, you know, it was actually the university that I went to. Wow, so I didn't know that. that's awesome. Katie. That's my alma mater. So I love the university of Mobile. I remember my preview day, my senior year, I walked onto campus and felt the Holy Spirit in a different way. And I knew, and people were so happy. I was like, why are all these people smiling? <laughs> I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> and uh, my brother called it, this is my brother's testimonial for University of Mobile. He was like, it was like being at student retreat 24 oh, seven. <laughs> I was like, you know, like mm -hmm. that is a great review. Like it doesn't demean it. What it really means is like, this is a great atmosphere for growth. Like we really are intentional about spiritual growth and you know, yeah, I teach marketing. You know, I don't, I don't, I teach software development, uh, but in each and every single one of those class classes that I teach, I make sure that they understand how people matter, 
you know, mm-hmm. and that the gospel can go forth because of things that are learning in software development or wow. because of, you know, so they don't have to necessarily go into being a minister to be a minister. Right. Um, yeah. And so that's been really, that's been really fun. So the agency, the Good Work Agency uh, is kind of out of that. So we have tons of, it's out of the School of Business, which is why I teach in. And we're just teaching students how to be entrepreneurs. And then also we serve churches. So we do good work for those who do good work. So we serve, we serve churches, nonprofits, small businesses, um, really any business that is for good. And so we, it's been great. I have, have some really great kids in the, in the group. There's only, it's about less than 10. And through that, we've actually gotten to go. We, I took them two years ago to Facebook and we actually got to lead worship at Facebook. How cool is that? Right. Like the Facebook. (laughs) Yeah. Like at Facebook inside in San Francisco. That's awesome. Yeah. It was, it was really crazy. And I got to share the gospel and, and pray with some different employees. And I mean, yeah, what a special time. And so I love creating those opportunities for students to connect with people um, like people who work at Facebook, or we got to meet some people who worked at Yahoo or Instagram or Apple. And uh, we really want them to understand that you can share the gospel wherever you work and you need to take it with you however you go. And so that business can be a mission, right? Uh, or a mission field. And so, yeah, that's been a big part of it. That we, we do web design, we do branding, uh, we do social media for some clients. And so, it, yeah, it's been fantastic. It, uh, just to let them work and get the experience and knowledge, it's, it's been such a fun uh, thing. We turn around, we use that money to create scholarships and other opportunities again, right? So oh, nice. they got to, the kids that went to Facebook didn't pay for it. They, we used the money um, that we raised, uh, worked for, and, <laughs> and uh, went to Facebook that last time. So uh, we were hoping to go on a mission trip this year. Of course, that got called off, but uh, that's kind of our, our plans and what we love doing. And we'd love to partner with anybody um, out there for sure. Wow. Thank you for asking. I love that. And I, you are such a good example to me of how like your passion and your purpose and your calling, all of that is like connected and it's not these little segmented categories. I love how you have such a holistic view of, of those things. Um, I guess my question for you now is like, we're in quarantine world right now. Mm -hmm. And I know some people are like, I can't wait till we get back to normal. Or, you know, you have some people who are like, it's going to be a new normal, you know, what are your thoughts about life on the other side of this whole pandemic? Like, what are you thinking and pondering and sensing? I don't know. I, know. <laughs> I think that's probably fair to good say. Answer. Like, that's a good answer. I have, too. No, I have yeah. no idea what the next normal looks like, yeah. but uh, it's really a whole new frontier, right? Like we're reinventing a lot of things. I yeah. do think that the internet I'm hopeful that the internet continues to be used as it is right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Not just because, you know, I want people to stay at their homes or anything, not at Mm -hmm. all. And like, I don't negate, I love being gathered um, physically as the church. I think people automatically assume like, ah, you must hate the like church being in person. (laughs) (laughs) I grew up in a tiny church of a hundred people where they knew everything about me. I love church. Same girl. Same. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I love a good hug. I want Miss Linda to come and try to kiss me and me like, be like, ah, Miss Linda. (laughs) Gotta get the swerve on. Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) And the dinners after church, you know, like those are always. Oh my gosh. Lunches, dinners. Casseroles. I want them. Yeah. (laughs) Me too, girl. Yeah. I need them. Um, But at the same time, like, I'm like, this is so good. Like, it's so good that we're trying to reach people in new ways. And that's what I want because I felt like we got so stale and we stopped Mm -hmm. trying to innovate. And the church has always been the greatest place for creativity and innovation in anywhere. Like, I mean, I don't know if you've ever read how Christianity changed the world, but like, um, you know, art, if you go to Europe, the best art in the world is in the church, right? Yeah, true. And so that's what people want to tour. They want to tour these beautiful churches. And I'm like, they're not relics. They're holy places. Right. And I'm like, these, 
we're, we're, I, I just want us to be innovative again. I want us to yeah. find that place again where like we can't wait to share the gospel with people and we want to do it in new ways that reaches people uh, that are far from Christ that have never heard about him. So that's, that's kind of what, you know, what I'm, what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> yeah. I love that. You're definitely doing it. And I think that's a good, you know, kind of call to us all to, be innovative and be open, you know? Um, I guess another thing I'd love to ask, I know we need to wrap up, but I'm just, I love talking with you. I just want to keep going. Um, what would you say for people as they try to think about maybe staying in the vein of this virtual online experience and then also thinking, well, maybe one day we will reopen. Um, mm -hmm. What advice or tips would you have for people right now? Uh, so I think a lot of churches are doing this really cool idea that I love of house church, um, and so this is like a good slow roll back into entry. Okay. And I love it. So all the churches that I've seen, what they're doing is they're, so right now we're doing live streams, but it's to individual families, but this is instead saying, okay, we're going to have certain houses that are set up as house churches where people can gather in groups of less than 10 and continue to do church, but have a little bit more of a social aspect of it. And so that way you're not coming all into the building. You know, we don't know how safe it is with singing yeah. in a building together. Like yeah. we just don't know at this point. And so if we can come together into small groups of house churches and even well, I, would, I think it would be really cool post it in your neighborhood group, right? Like we're having house church at this person's church at this person's house on your street. You can literally just walk over to their house and like, they're going to have some breakfast food or whatever, and we're going to watch church. And so I think that that would be really unique. And so we have to like prepare houses and prepare people to do that, to open their homes as churches. Uh, so it's very old. It's very like, I don't want to say old. It's not, it's very New Testament of us. Yeah. Um, it's honestly kind of old school that. though, kind of the way things yeah. were in the Bible days. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's a little old school, but new school. It's old school means new school, right? Because now we can access the, the world's greatest like theologians, right? Like the greatest minds of understanding and breaking down scripture through our TV. Um, but then still have the ability to discuss and have fellowship and come together. Um, it's gathered and scattered. It looks different than before, but I think that that's where the church was going anyway. Honestly, I had some feeling that that's where we were going to go, but this accelerated it quite a bit. Yeah. Like I thought eventually in 20 years, we might do that. That would be great. Um, but, and you know, you don't have to all do it on Sunday morning either. You know, you can do it throughout the week because if you schedule, you know, if you have the recorded content by that time, it doesn't have to be on Sunday morning. It can be at any time of the week. So yeah. Anyways, I just think it opens up new opportunities. So. I love that. And that's good because we'd kind of gotten in the rhythm um, of going to church on Saturday nights. And mm -hmm. I loved that. And um, yeah, you just have so much flexibility. And so, man, Katie, I could talk to you forever. You know, I just, <laughs> you're so refreshing. Um, you're so innovative. You have such great strategies. And I love your heart for people. And it's very obvious that you um, care so much. And so I hope that that our viewers have enjoyed getting to know you a little bit. And um, if you want to connect with Katie, you can find her online at churchcommunications.com. Go search for that Facebook group and get connected. Um, you can email Katie. It's Katie at churchcommunications.com. Katie, thank you so much for joining us. And I meant to ask, how are things in Mobile, Alabama with quarantine? I didn't even ask that at the beginning. How's everything going down there? Everything's fine. No, yeah. yeah, I can't complain. Beautiful. Yeah. Got beautiful weather so you know we're all stuck at house in our houses but at least it's pretty true that's a good word that's a good word thank you katie for joining us we appreciate it yeah.